All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to Fiddle Word Gaming. I'm Justin, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining. I see we have Low Life as the first again. Thanks for thanks for coming out. Um, all right, today, so we're doing a quick live battle, a solo battle of uh, Blood and Plunder, um, and we've got two forces for you today. We got uh, Brethren of the Coast Horse coming in to raiding um, basically a fort. Uh, settlement here. Um, but the Brethren of the Coast, they're kind of like, I guess, kind of the more piratey of the two factions. Um, and they're made up of some Dutch sailors. We got some Zeleiden Dutch sailors in the front, manning some guns. In the mid deck, we've got some uh, Enterplug, which are kind of the more elite Dutch boarding party, and they're also good with artillery. They're manning some cannons in the mid deck. And at the back deck, we have some Flibustier, which are like French buccaneers, basically. Um, so they're like kind of a coalition force kind of coming in to raid um, the French Caribbean militia who are set up on the beach. Um, so yeah, this is a raid scenario. We've got um, basically two kind of markers here um, that the attacking force has to capture. So it's a, like a little chest, and then maybe some nice, uh, I don't know, rum or fancy uh, whiskey. Um, so yeah, basically we have to set these up. Um, we can put these anywhere on the defender side on land, um, but they have to be 10 inches away from each other, and they have to be um, 6 inches away from any uh, board edge, basically. So, um, low left, do you have anywhere uh, you want to put these? Um, you, you can place one, you get, the, the rule is the defender gets to place one and then the attacker gets to place one. So if you want to pick a spot anywhere here, um, you can place one of these um, markers. And basically the, the game works in that if I get close to one of these markers, um, I'll avoid getting strike points against me. However, if I, if you manage to um, keep me away, then you avoid getting strike points against you. And if you get strike pen points against you, that's bad, because it means you could possibly lose the game. The more strike points you get, the worse um, it is. And if you get more than two above your opponent, um, you have to take a test and you might lose. So if you want to figure that out, um, I'll go through the French Caribbean militia units. Um, okay, so the units I have for the French Caribbean Militia are... Um, I've got a unit of Miliciens over here, which are basically like the regular... Uh, I don't know, Militia? We've got... Our cheap Militia, I guess. we got... Uh, uh, Milices de Carabs, or French Militia here, and they have a commander attached to them. Um, they're a little more elite militia force however they're still kind of uh, they're still kind of cheap points wise um we've got a group of buccaneers and they're basically your snipers and then up manning the fort we got a group of marines who are basically french sailors but right now they're going to man two um heavy cannons and they're have the aid of a master gunner who's going to help them out reloading and stuff so yeah um, basically we'll just get, get set up here. So I'll be playing the attacker with these cards and then the AI slash chat slash my other half will be playing the defender. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get set up on the boat. If you have any ideas of where you want to place the objective markers or you want to place the units on the defender side, let me know and I can place them up there. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to set my ship up. I have to set it up two feet away. Um, from the from the board edge. Uh, from the from the shore I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and while you guys think about where you wanna put uh, the units or the objective markers. Uh, there's just two objective markers. So you can place one, and then I'll place the other one. 
Um, the, the rule is the defender gets to place one, and I get to, and the attacker gets to place the other one. All right, and to move, I got this nifty little uh, C template. This this bit thing basically helps you uh, move the ship along, but I'll explain that as I'm going. Um, okay, so let's maybe start getting set up with units now. Um, I'll be right back, just one second. Yeah, guys, let me know if it's uh, if the video quality is okay, if it's lagging too much. Um, oh, we got. I won behind the two white rocks. All right. I won here. Behind the two white rocks. Okay, awesome. Um, hopefully, the latency is a bit better this time. So. I can reply to you almost real time now. Um, so there's one going to be near the white rocks. So that's the defender's choice. Um, I'm going to be placing mine right at the beach because I want to be. I want to get to it as close as possible. So the other one's right here. The chest is right here, and the grog or fancy ale is um, behind the two white rocks. Yeah, I, I gotta stand up near the mic. That's okay. Um, so we also have our units. Do you have any idea of where you want to place the units? We've got your snipers, kind of uh, the small group of snipers. We got two militia here. Um, you probably want to put your commander unit, which is here in the center-ish, so he can give out kind of orders to the whole battlefield. Um, they're called command points. Um, but yeah, any ideas about that? I'm just gonna get the cards ready. So the way it works is um, you get one card per unit uh, in your force. So the attacker has three units, the defender has four, so the defender gets a bit more selection with the cards they get. Um, and the cards are basically, um, they're gonna dictate how many actions a unit can take, and how f quickly that unit can act. And there's a little cheat sheet that I have that I'll probably show you guys later. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start setting up the uh, commander's unit in the middle. Okay, so we might probably give him some cover. So maybe we'll put him right here. Just like so. Uh, you could you could put the snipers up there if you wanted. Um, they, yeah, you can put them up there. It might take a, it might take a while to like descend the building should they have to get into melee. Um, and they're also a little bit farther away from the ship. Uh, range does play a factor here. So if you get them closer to the beach, they'll be able to shoot quicker, I guess, without uh, their range, their accuracy will be better. Um, but I could put them on the fort. And no, if they're both in the same kind of area, you can have two units per building section. So I can definitely fit both um, the snipers and the cannon crew on the top and they wouldn't get in each other's way. That's totally fine.
All right, so I'm putting the the snipers, uh, the buccaneers up on the fort along with the uh, other unit, um, and basically they're all they're all kind of protected up there. Um, the only issue is they might take them some time to come down. And we have one more unit, um, uh, basically kind of cheap militia unit down at the bottom. Militia ends you can put anywhere you want as well. Do you want to put them by the other objective marker? We're just going to give these guys some cover here for now. If you want to change it, just let me know. Um, I, I just put them kind of behind. Uh, Thomas, you just joined, so you, we have two objective, objective markers that the, basically the attacker force has to try and claim, or get close to at least. We have a chest out front here, and we have a uh, bunch of casts of fine whiskey behind these two rocks over here. And with that, we're going to go ahead and start. Okay, no worries. Um, if you want to change it up, I'm just going to select my first card. So the way it works is I've drawn these three cards for the attacker. Um, spades are the quickest and clubs are the slowest. And basically the way it works is I have a little cheat sheet. I don't know if you can see that, but um, each unit comes basically in a different training levels. They're inexperienced, trained, or veteran. Um, and depending on which unit that uh, unit is, it will act differently with different actions. Veteran units obviously get more actions, and if you, get, if you draw a spade, um, you have fewer actions, but you get to go quicker. If you have a club, um, you get more actions, but you're slower um, on the draw, if that makes sense. But we'll, we'll get into it. Um, I'll show you kind of how it works. <laughs> charge and shoot, uh, Thomas says. Okay, we're going to charge and shoot. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to play the slow club because I don't really want to be coming close at this point. I want to kind of like stay away until I'm in range and then come in really quickly so I don't have to get fired on too much. So that's my go. Um, for the defender, usually the defender draws cards as well, but since we're playing solitaire rules, I'm just gonna draw the first one. And that one is a spade. So with spades, it's usually good to activate um, units with special bonuses. However, it's, they're pretty far away. So I'm just gonna check the range. So they're currently out of range of your snipers. Um, it'll take a little while for them to get close. Your cannons will probably hit on a, a 10 because they don't have a range. So um, if it goes beyond their range, they just hit on natural 10s. Um, but you might want to wait until the boat gets closer. And with these units, I'll check. So that's about, um, that's a little, a little over two feet. So that would be a range penalty of um, five, um, or six rather. There's a four inch, every four inches, you gain one penalty for your shoot. Um, and if you look on the right side of the screen, I have all of their stats listed. So you basically add the range penalty on top of their shoot value. So the commander's unit, the Milicians, has a shoot of six. So you'd add um, five on top of that at this range. That would take them to 11. Um, 11s normally can't hit things, but since they have firelock muskets, they can shoot anything as long as it's not beyond 24 inches, I believe. Um, so they would be just out of range, unfortunately, as well. Um, so everyone's kind of out of range, so maybe we'll just activate. reading the chat oh thanks thanks for joining uh 
we got Alex and Alex. Oh, two Alexes joining today. Um, that's great. So I think the defender is just going to activate a dummy unit because everyone's out of range anyway. So you probably want to activate. Let's just activate these uh, Melissians because they're not going to. They're not very good anyway. Um, and we'll go on to the next card. So I have to move my ship. I forgot one thing. So is the attacker. I have a ship. I have to move it at the beginning of the first activation. Or sorry, at the first activation. Um, at the last activation and any activation in between. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to move upwind. This ship has a speed of three inches when moving upwind and the wind's coming from basically this direction. It's going, it's blowing this way. Down the, down there. Uh, shoreline. Okay, so that's the first uh, activation. Now, do the next card. I'm going to draw my slowest card again. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pass. The attacker gets the opportunity to pass because I have less cards than the defender. The defender is going to go ahead and go, and that's a club. Um, do you have anything you want to activate? Um... Let's, let's check the range again, because I did move. So still out of range with the snipers, but you'll just be in range with the commander's unit, and you'll be in range with the cannons as well. Um, both are looking at tens to hit. So you can either act or you can wait a little, wait until next turn to, to get a little closer. And the reason why you might want to wait is because every time you shoot, you get reload markers. Um, and it takes time to reload. So it's up to you to kind of um, shoot now and hope for the best or kind of wait until they get closer and have a little bit easier of a target. chat so <laughs> you guys are thinking about what to do with the next unit um, I will just I'll just explain a little bit about the ship it has um, this, I'm using a light a merchant frigate actually uh, is what I'm using today uh, has a top speed of five but windwards it, it loses two two inches windward so it only has a speed of three turning uh, going upwind which I am slightly going upwind right now Okay, so you want to wait. So we're going to wait. Um, maybe we'll activate the... Since they're out of range anyway, we're just going to activate the snipers. Um, we're going to go ahead and wait with them. Because they're not going to come pretty, fairly close yet. So we're going to move on to the next card. Now, I don't have to move the ship because I didn't actually go. But I will have to do it this time. So that's the six of spades against a heart. So the spade is quicker than the heart, um, so I'll be going first. And I'm going to move. So last, I forgot to mention what unit I activated. I actually activated the Flevio Stairs at the back, so they've already went. This is the second activation, I think. Maybe I'll try to shoot. So it's just under 20 inches away. Um, that will be a penalty of four under 20 inches. Um, so that's just enough to try to hit. I've got two swivel guns. I'm going to go try to do it. So swivel guns get three dice each. I'm needing tens to hit um, your commander's unit, basically, on the beach. I got 110, so that's one hit. Your commander's unit needs to make a save. 
Um, they have a save of seven. So they need a seven plus. They got a six, so one dies. So that's first blood, and we'll just put him over there, kind of out of the way. Now, every time a unit dies, um, you have to roll a fatigue test for that unit. And every time a unit gets hit, so one, one for the unit to get hit in the first place, and one for each casualty the unit takes. So in this case, I'm rolling two resolve um, tests. And their resolve is six, so I need a six plus. So they pass both of the resolves so they don't get any fatigue. Um, and I'll explain fatigue as it comes up. But that's basically their go. Um, I moved the ship and those guys shot. They're gonna free reload because they have a special rule where they can free reload with the spade. So basically right now they're only down to one, um, one reload marker on their swivel guns. It's your guys' turn. So you have a heart. Now you're a little closer to in range now. Yeah, I just measured that. So you're under 20 inches, so it'll be a penalty of four. So you'll still be hitting on tens. Um, so do you want to wait again or try fire with the cannons maybe? Everything will be a 10 to hit with this range. Actually, the cannons might be a bit... So the cannons, the cannons work a little bit differently, but they're gonna be a little tough to hit as well. All right, I think, I think, um... I think we're gonna go ahead and wait, because Alex had to wait last time. Cannons are very slow to reload. They gain, most units with small arms gain two reload markers. Cannons gain four. However, you do have a special character up there, Master Gunner, who helps, who basically gives an additional reload um, when that unit is activated. So it helps a little bit, but they're still slower than small arms. So you could choose to shoot with the commander's unit and try to reload quickly by next turn, but um, we'll see. You basically, you need to take actions to get rid of reload markers. Um, so, for example, with this heart, this heart will give, if you're activating your cannons unit, it gives them uh, two, two actions. Uh, they can shoot for one action, they can reload for one action, um, and but that, then that'll be their turn. They have to wait until next turn to kind of use actions again to remove those reload markers. So we're gonna go ahead and how would I do this? I would probably, uh, I'd probably go ahead and shoot with the commanders. We're gonna do this. Let's let's just try to do it before they get killed. More. Oh, you want to wait? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna let you wait. So we're gonna wait with the cannons. Um, so we're gonna activate the cannons, and maybe, maybe at the end we'll shoot with the uh, commanders again. All right. So this is the last card. I got the spade again, so I have to move first. I have my middle unit. I don't think they can do anything because they're just manning cannons, and they need to be pointed in the right direction. So I'm just gonna go forward again. three inches forward. All right, now you probably want to shoot. I'm gathering you should be even closer. So you're a bit closer. It's still still a penalty of four. Um, so you'll be wanting tens to hit, but let's go ahead and try it. Alright, so they get seven dice because one of them died. And they're looking for ten. Um, yeah, okay. Ooh, you, so you got two tens. So that's two hits with that unit. They're gonna gain two reloads. And 
you mark reloads with these little dice. They have kind of little gunpowder, so I'm just going to put that next to the unit. Um, and my Zeladen in the front, they need to make saves. And they save on a 6 plus. 7 plus 1 for the hardcover that they get from the boat, the ship deck. And they need 6s, basically. So 4 and a 5, both the, the 2 die. Ouch, that hurts. And I need to roll three resolve for them. And they have a resolve of five. So that's two fails. So they get two fatigue, which is not cool. So that hurts. That was a lucky hit from you guys. Um... <laughs> Wee! Yeah, you pew pew. You got them. <laughs> you got them good. So as a commander, you get a special thing called command points that you can like basically give actions out to other units, even though it's not your turn. Um, so we're gonna put. Uh, so you can do a number of things with command points. You can tell this unit to shoot if you wanted. You could tell your cannons to shoot if you wanted, or you can wait. Um, or you can reload yourself, or a mix of kind of both. You have two command points, but you can only use one on your unit. On your own unit. Uh, you guys, the chat and AI slash me uh, is playing the defender. Um, so you guys are on the land, and I'm actually controlling the uh, the attacker by myself. That's correct. So. Um, Maybe we'll go ahead and since these guys are fatigued, it would be nice to get a little more, a few more shots off. So we might just shoot more. So they're also looking for tens. We're gonna shoot with this unit, um, the cheap militia, because we're gonna command point them. So basically, the commander is gonna say, "Fire!" and they're going to uh, shoot into the hull of the first deck, and they get eight shots. And again, we're looking for tens because of their firelock muskets. Uh, no tens this time, unfortunately. So look at rain game two reload. Uh, you guys are the French Car Car uh, Caribbean militia, and you guys are defending from the land. The brethren are attacking from the sea, and I'm playing. Um, I'm gonna also command point. the militia to reload for one so they're kind of prepared for next time i think you guys might want to wait with the cannons a little bit to do mass damage when it gets closer probably next turn um, that's the end of the first turn all right second turn i'm going to draw three cards Again, I'm going to play my slowest card, I think. And you guys get the club. So I'll be acting first. So you guys can kind of think about what you wanted to do with your club. So most units will get three actions with that. Except for your two guys at the front, they'll probably get two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move and shoot. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to activate with my back unit again. Mm, yeah, I'm going to activate with my back unit again and kind of waste their time because they're not in range. Um, so that's their go. And I'll just check the chat to see what you guys want. Yeah, exactly. The people in the ship are trying to attack the people in the land.
All right, so maybe you guys want to... We'll see what you guys want to do. You guys want to... Oh. <laughs> you want to check the range. Okay, I'll check the range. Pre-measuring is not a thing in this game, so you can, you can measure as much as you want. So the cannons are over 20 inches away. Um, your units at front are under uh, under 20, so it'll be a, uh, actually under 12, I think. So, so it'd be a penalty of three for your front units, and then a penalty of um, four for your ones at the fort. Yeah, reloading would probably be a good idea. So you could, if you wanted to, um, for two actions, you don't want to reload this unit because they have a rule called poorly equipped. If they reload on a club, they'll get an extra reload. So that's not cool. Um, so we're going to maybe, you might as well, um, let's see. You might as well fire some shots with your, with your uh, snipers. It's probably a good idea. So they'll need tens, but there's okay. They can reload, reload. So they're not going to actually gain any reload markers this turn because they um, they have three actions. So they're going to shoot for one and reload, reload. And no tens, unfortunately. But maybe next time. gonna pass again because I don't want to get any closer you guys have got a heart a five of heart so that will give most units just one action um, it might be a good idea to fire the cannons at that point because you actually get a free reload uh, as a special rule on a heart with that unit so maybe we'll go ahead and do that the other option is reloading for one in command point, but no, you probably want to probably want to shoot, right? The reload is the same on the snipers as everybody else. So everybody basically with a musket gets two um, reload markers every time they shoot. Um, and every action takes away one reload marker. So as far as reloads work, all the small arms gets two reloads every time they shoot. Um, just the cannons get four reload markers every time they shoot. Okay, firing the cannons. So they, what did they say? Ah! Commander's dead. <laughs> Hit by a palm tree. Um, Okay, so it'll be a penalty. So cannons work an interesting way. So you roll for an initial shot, which is just the range penalty. So at this range, it'll just be five because they're uh, just over 20 inches of roll away. So you're looking for five ups with two cannons. Oh no, you got um, two duds. Now, I should mention that this game has something called fortune points. Um, it's basically allows you to re-roll. Um, you can do it three times per force. So you get three fortune points and I get three fortune points and we can use them at any role we want during the game. It's like a redo. Um, so if you want to use that, um, you can do it now because I just rolled two twos with your cannons and which will both miss. And you'll still gain the reload markers, but maybe you don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to go get some fortune points so I can track it and you guys can decide what you want to do with those. If you want to re-roll or if you want to keep it.
All right, so you guys are re-rolling. So you're spending one of your fortune points. Uh, I'll keep mine over here. And you guys can... So one is going to the fortune gods, and you're going to re-roll. Oh, so you got one hit. So one made it. So this time, one cannon hit. So with that initial hit, you get to roll four dice on these heavy cannons. And this will be four, which is the range penalty. I'm sorry, five, which is the range penalty, plus the fortitude of the ship. The fortitude of the ship right now is four. So you're going to add those numbers together. So that'll be a nine. And if this hits, um, you'll do some damage. So you got two nines. So that's two hits on the ship. So a cannon, a cannon has just come, pfft, impacted the first uh, deck of the ship. Now these uh, guys need to make two saves. Um, they both make their saves. However, they'll still need to take a point of uh, a resolve test to see if they're shaken. And they fail the resolve test. So now the front unit is shaken. And as a consequence, they go prone. So every time a unit gets shaken, they can run away or go prone. Because they're in a ship, they're not going to run away. They're just going to hide behind the uh, deck. And it'll be harder to shoot them, but at the same time, they can't do anything until they're unshaken. Which is unfortunate. So I'm going to go ahead and... So that's your action. So you guys get four reloads. So normally you get four reloads, but because of this heart you played, you get one reload for free, and you get one reload with the Master Gunner, who's going to give you a command point to do that. He's a... Well, she, in this case, is a special um, character in your force. And you're going to use one action to reload as well, since you have nothing else to do. So you actually only have to have one reload marker for your cannons, which sets you up nicely for next round. Uh, ships can sink. So if, it, if I had a, if you roll a 10 anytime you shoot at a ship with a cannon, um, it's called a lucky hit. Um, and it causes things like fires, leaks, um, destroys mass. There's a whole bunch of different consequences. Um, I didn't roll a natural 10, so you didn't guys get it, but maybe next time. Um, with that, it comes to me. And I'm going to play... Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to play my next... I'm just going to play a spade and try to rally my front unit. So I got the spade. I'm going to go first. And they're just going to try to rally. So what rallying means is I'm just throwing, I'm just making a resolve test with three dice. And if they pass the resolve, which they do, yes, they have a resolve of five. So they pass all of the resolve so they can get rid of their fatigue. Unfortunately, that's all they can do this turn, so they're still hiding behind the gunwale, um, but they've gotten rid of their fatigue. I'm also going to turn my ship, so hopefully I can shoot you guys soon um, with my cannons. And now back to you guys. So you drew a queen of diamonds. Oh, so, sorry. That was the... Uh... You guys already drew your card. That's your next card. <laughs> you drew a queen of hearts. Um, so you've already activated your cannons. And you've already activated your uh, buccaneers. So you have these two units in front. Uh, the objectives are um, here, one one here, and one here. Maybe I should make that clear. I'm just going to put red dice near the objective markers. So 
So hopefully that's a bit clearer. The red, the big red dice are um, where the objectives are right now. <laughs> you guys are gonna go for lucky hits. All right, so maybe. Maybe you guys can reload. Um, you could probably reload this guy. That's two, that'll be two actions, so. We're gonna do something fancy. Um, you guys are gonna reload with the heart for one. And you're gonna push, do something called push. So if you don't have the action available, so with a heart you only have one action for this unit here however you can gain a fatigue to push and gain another action so i'm gonna give you guys i'm gonna let you guys push you'll gain one fatigue which has no penalty um at the current point if you get two you get a penalty um but one fatigue for now um and you're fully reloaded when the commander's unit activates they can push a command point to this unit to fire um which is hopefully it's what you guys will do. Um, it's always kind of good to activate your commander in the middle or last. That way you can kind of uh, uh, pump out command points around. If you activate him right in the beginning, sometimes his command points are wasted. All right, so that's what they're gonna do um, for their card. I have one more card to do on my end which is a diamond. Running, running out of space here. So right now I'm in the wind's eye, and what that means is I have to make an advanced maneuver because I don't have any wind pushing me. Um, I have to do something fancy with my sailors to try to turn. Um, if I don't, I will end up drifting, which basically I just move one inch backwards um, until I come back into the wind. So I'm activating my commander's unit. He's going to tell with a command point to the guys behind him to go ahead and make a tacking maneuver, which hopefully should bring my guns around um, to fire. And they did five plus. Yes, so they got um, they got a six, so the boat can tack, so I can turn. sailing off the table. Um, so the the ship's arc of fire is the basically the width of their deck. So they're gonna shoot right into this unit here. And they have um, three light cannons. You guys have got a heavy cannon, these guys only have light ones. That'll be a penalty of four plus four, eight. So these guns have a thing called grape shot, meaning it's not one cannonball, but a bunch of little cannonballs that kind of spread out. So instead of rolling cannons like you guys did, where I roll one dice and then you get to roll more, um, I'm just rolling all the dice right out the bat. Now grape shot doesn't do any damage against structures, but against units it does a lot of damage. So I've got six dice and I'm needing eights. And I got two hits on your units there. And they're gonna roll resolve. And they have a resolve of six. Or sorry, they're gonna save, and they have a save of uh, uh, six. Plus, this is actually five. So only one dies. And now they have to roll a resolve. 
which they fail both. So they're actually shaken now, unfortunately. And they're going to go prone as well. Um, I was setting them up for a nice shot, but they got fired upon and now they're prone and won't be able to shoot, which kind of sucks. Um, and with the rest of their move, um, these guys are just going to reload their cannons. So they have three actions, they're going to reload for two. And they shot, and then that's basically all they can do. With the final command point, because they have two of them, they're just going to ask the front unit to stand up. And that's it. You guys still have one more unit, I believe. Um, which is a diamond. So you have your commander's unit left. So that'll be two actions for that unit. It's actually a hard scenario for the attacker, so I'm surprised they're doing, doing that much damage. Um, I think the commander's unit is just going to reload for one and shoot, meaning he'll get two more reloads, but he'll get to shoot. And that will be a penalty of three on the back deck. So we are again looking for, oh, we're looking for nines this time, so a little bit better. So seven dice for the commander's unit. Looking for nines. We got one. Just one nine. Um, let me know any time if you want to re-roll, um, and we can go ahead and do that if you want. But that would be spending another fortune point. It's, it's a target of nine. Maybe you want to save it for later. Yeah, maybe you guys want to save it. I would save it. So they're just going to roll a... got one hit. They're going to roll a save. Um, no, that does not make it. They have a save of six. That's where they are. So the one of the guys in the back deck is going to die. One of the French Buccaneers. And then I'm going to roll Resolve for them. They have a Resolve of five, I believe. And they pass both of the Resolves so they don't gain any fatigue. A commander still has one. Uh, actually, has two command points. So you might want to command point the cannons to reload it up top, and then maybe you guys want you want to rally this unit over here, so it's not pummeled next turn. Um, oof! You got rid of one, so you're not shaken anymore. Fatigue. If you get three fatigue or more, you're shaken. Um, two, you lose an action, and one, you're just okay. <laughs> you can't bury the treasure. <laughs> it's it's too. You don't have time. This is a, in the heart of battle. You don't have time. Um, all right, so that's the end of the second turn. I should mention that I need to get one of these units on the docks by the third turn. Otherwise, I get a strike point. So we'll go for the next turn. Um, oof, I got an interesting hand here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Play a ten of hearts, and then you guys get you guys get the spades. You guys get to go first. What do you guys want to do? Do 
yeah, the current options for you guys are to reload. You can shoot with some units. Um, you can also move, but you probably don't want to do that because you're in cover right now. And these guys, the guys on my ship are better fighters than you, um, but you guys are better shooters. So what do you guys want to do with your spade? I mean, you could shoot with your sniper unit. They, they might have a pretty good shot. Yeah, I'll we'll be looking at tens again. You want to do cannon again? Sure. Um, this time you probably want to do the back deck, I'm guessing. So we'll do the cannon. So you're looking at fives again on the initial hit with the cannons. Cannons are fully reloaded. I reloaded one with a command point last turn. So you got one hit again with the cannons. So that means I roll four dice and they're needing nines. And oh no, you didn't get any nines. And you didn't, unfortunately you didn't get any tens. So the cannon misses completely. You'll get a free reload from the Master Gunner, a free reload from pulling a spade. So you'll only be at two, le two reloads for the cannons right now. But that is there. Uh, I'm going to try to move my ship on my turn. Um, and think about what you guys want to do next. So I'm really in the wind's eye right now, so I have to make a uh, another advanced maneuver. And I'm going to do that with, uh, with my front unit. And we'll see if I can get a 5 plus. And I get a 6, so I get to turn. So that's all they can do on their turn. Um, so that's with the heart. I'm gonna draw my next card, which is another heart. And you guys get a heart, but a higher heart. So you guys get to, get to go first. So I move my ship around. I'm probably gonna try to come to the dock pretty soon. Yeah, all the dice are 10 sided. Sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, so when you're this far away, it's kind of hard to hit. Um, I have kind of sailed my boat far away from your fort, which which is not great, and you can't really move the cannons around. Um, but yeah, you guys go to go first. You can either shoot, you can try to reload. Heart gives the cannon crew a bonus reload it gives that's it um it'll give the fr front two units just one action um and it'll give your back two units two actions So maybe you guys, I'm just waiting to see if you guys want to shoot or you want to reload. Hmm, Let's see what we can do. Yeah, you could. Well, you might want to do actually because mm, it's, it's tough because this unit you might want to just want that, that unit there to stand up. He only gets one action though, so he's going to have to rally. Um, yeah, I would say maybe activate your commander's unit.
you can definitely move the snipers. Um, you so it'll, it'll take them. So with a heart, you'll have uh, two actions for the snipers. So that'll take them to the bottom of the fort inside. It's four inches for every movement in a building section. So it'll take you to the bottom. So you won't be able to shoot, but you'll be able to get closer, I guess. Yeah, you could ask this commander to stand them up. It seems like that's that's the way you guys want to do. Maybe that's a smart thing to do. So the commander is going to activate and use a command point to stand that unit up. Um, heart gives you one action, so he's going to reload for one. Um, you still have a command point to give out. So you could reload again, or you could get... Um, you could reload and push to shoot if you wanted to. I'll move snipers with the second one. Okay, so you're going to move... I'm, I'm going to do what uh, Low Life and Team Loader suggesting. I'm going to move the um, snipers down one. So they're now we're in the middle tier of the building. So they move four inches down. And on their turn, they will get to activate. So they'll probably be able to out of the building on their turn. While you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and play my last card. Um, which is another heart. And you guys drew a heart as well. You guys drew the higher heart. So you get to go next. You've activated your command unit. You've activated your cannons. So you have these guys here. And you have your snipers. Which guys would you want to move first? Maybe you guys want to move the... I think you guys want to move the snipers out. That's what I'm gathering. So they'll go... They'll get two actions on the heart. So they can go down to the... They can just basically come outside the building. Which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to loop around here. And that's their go. Um, I it's my turn now, and I have my I didn't activate my commander yet, correct? No, I did not. So we are going to get my commander to grapple. So, which means he's gonna throw a grapple. As long as it's three inches from the uh, from the dock, I can grapple it. And he's just three inches from the dock, so uh, I've got to actually command point them to abandon their artillery because I can't just do grapples, which is weird. Um, and then I'm gonna do use all of their actions, which is two. So they're gonna need a four to grapple the dock. And I got a 10, so they end up grappling the dock. And they're just gonna move right up to the dock. Um, and that's their go. So next turn they can kind of jump out. Uh, I still have a command point. So the next command point, I'm just gonna get these guys to abandon their artillery as well, so they can jump out um, anytime they want. So go. Um, you guys still have one more. Uh, you drew a diamond, so you get two actions. Um, but because you have two fatigue, you actually get a minus one penalty to your actions. You only get one action, which you guys can probably shoot with. Do you guys want to shoot? 
Or you can rally. You can try to get rid of that fatigue. Those are kind of your kind of two options right now. Because I decided to do that, I'm gonna think. You still got two fortune points left, but three. It's gonna come in handy later on, I hope. <laughs> All right, you're gonna shoot. So let's shoot at the. It's always kind of smart to shoot at the weak units. So you're under a foot away, so that's only a penalty of two now. So you'll be needing nines to hit that front unit. So the units that are activating is this one right here. Um, and you got one. You got one nine, um, and they're gonna try to save that. Uh, they failed their save, so one of them dies. And then I'll roll their resolve. Uh, and they get one fatigue, because they failed one. So that's, that's their go. So that is the end of round three. So I've actually gained a strike point for not being on the dock by the end of round three. Um, which is not cool, but that's okay. Because I'm going to come running out now. And... No... No what to activate. Okay. So you guys drew a king of uh, hearts. I drew a club. You guys get to go first. Um, so you guys might want to clubs you get three actions with your uh, back units and just two actions with your front units so maybe we're gonna go ahead and uh, hmm, what should we do we're gonna go ahead and uh, move oh these guys get a reload it forgot right here. And you might want to use move your back units closer so they can start to shoot. So we're going to move them 8 inches. Um, and they can still shoot, actually. So move them eight inches and they can still shoot. Uh, give them some cover there behind the rock so they're not exposed in the open. Um, and they're gonna need nines to hit. Uh, got one ten, so that's one hit. And that'll be on the closest deck, which is commander's deck. So they're gonna take a save. Oop, one of them died. So one of the commanders models dies and they're going to roll resolve. They pa pass both of the resolves so they're okay. So that's your guy. I'm going to go ahead and start moving out. I'm going to probably jump out with the commander's unit. Mm, yes. Oh, these guys get... Before I forget, these guys get two reload for shooting. He's 
you guys can just jump out. So they're just gonna head up on the dock. Alright, so they're gonna head up on the dock and they're gonna go ahead and shoot their pistols, which you guys haven't seen yet. So they have something called Brace of Pistols, so they don't need to reload on their pistols, they can just keep shooting them because they got several of them tucked in their jackets and whatnot. And that'll be a penalty of two because they're more than eight inches away. Plus a penalty of two for the pistols, so they're gonna need ten. But there's a lot. Eight of them. Two, four, six, eight. So they're gonna need ten, and they're going at the unit. And I got no tens. But with pistols, brace of pistols, I don't need to reload, because they're my good unit. Um. That's what they're gonna do. They shot, they got out. Um, I still have some command points lying around, so I'm gonna tell these guys to jump down to the command point. So they can get ready to jump out. Command point. I guess we'll just command point the guys to rally who have one fatigue. Uh, they don't pass their command. That's okay. So that's it. Uh, that was a big action. Into a lot of stuff. Um, next card. So you guys got the spade. Um, you get to go first. Um, you guys got some thinking to do, I guess. You already activated this front unit, so you have all your other units to... Oh, sorry, you activated not the front unit, you activated your snipers. Your buccaneers. So you have other units to use as you wish. So it might be smart to... Hmm. You have one reload. You could start moving your, um, I don't know if you have fire cannons at these guys or if you want to start moving your uh, cannon crew down. Because your cannon crew are actually pretty good fighters, um, melee fighters. So I, I don't know if you want to do that. Or you can just activate one of your other units um, and see what happens. I'm just gonna zoom the camera in so you can see a little bit more. There, you get more, a little more of a zoomed view um, since the battle's getting tighter and we're approaching melee combat. Um, you don't have grape shot with the cannons, but um, effectively at this range, cannons, they, when you don't have um, grape shot and you're just firing at units, not units on decks, on boats, um, it's basically one giant sniper. It's like one cannonball will go through them because they do not get to roll saves. But you get less shots because you, you don't get the extra shots that you normally get. So you could, if you wanted to, 
Um, and you might want to do that before leaving. Yeah, let's go ahead and fire your cannons. You, can, you get one free reload, you get one reload with your Master Gunner, and you can fire one more time. And I'll let you guys choose if you want to shoot at the ship or at the unit in front. Because if you shoot at the unit in front, it's probably an automatic miss, or automatic hit. Um, or, sorry, not an automatic hit. An automatic death, should they hit. If you shoot at a unit in the boat, um, you'll get more chances of hitting, but not, they'll, they'll get to roll saves. Okay, units in front. So we're going to check the range. So that's under 20 inches. That's only a penalty of four. So you only need fours to hit. So if you get fours, these guys die outright. Uh, so two die. No chance of saving. So I've got seven casualty. I've already gained strike points. I've already gained two strike points. But well, you guys have zero. So that's that's not good news for me. But it's still we still have a little ways to go. Um, so that's their go. Basically, their cannons are fully loaded. Or, uh, fully unloaded. Um, that's their go. I get to activate my guys, and I'm just gonna basically tuck them. I'll move out for one, and then I'll move for one. So basically, they can just make it over. Cover so they don't die from your shots. That'll be there. Go. Um, and now we have our last card. Roll the club. You guys get the heart. So what have you activated? You activated your cannon unit, you activated your buccaneers, you have your two front units left. Hey, you can figure out which one. You have two that aren't activated. <laughs> so maybe you want to activate your commander's unit? I don't know. That uh, seems probably like a good idea. Yeah, I would do that. I would activate your commander's unit and you probably want to reload. You have one action, so you can reload. You can shoot if you want as a command point. Um, which is probably a good idea, because they're pretty close. We're gonna go ahead and shoot. Yeah, they're less than eight inches away. You're only gonna get a penalty of one on the shoot. So they're gonna be hitting on... Gonna be hitting on sevens now. Commander gets to do a shot, he's gonna be hitting on uh, a little worse, he'll be hitting on uh, eight, no nines, sorry, but the other ones will be seven. So I got one, I got one hit from that roll. Do you guys want to re-roll that with a fortune? Oh, 
I'll let you guys decide that, and then you have one more command point to decide as well. You could um, get the top guys to move down. You get these guys to maybe reload one. Reroll. Okay, I'm going to reroll. One more fortune point. Because he should be able to get better than that. So we're looking for a 9 on the red die, 7 for everybody else. A little bit better. You got two at least. You got two. Um, we're gonna roll saves for them. We're saving on a seven. One die. And then have to roll their resolve, which is five. And they get one fatigue. So they get one fatigue. Um, Semi-effective. You still have one more command point lying around. You have one more fortune. Um, you have three, you've used two. These guys will grab the reload. And then now maybe you want to move. Okay, so you're gonna get that crew to move. They're gonna be basically one lower, um, one level lower in the building, and that's your last command point. Um, and you actually have one more action, one more card. So, that's a club. get two actions without maybe you'll just reload oh, I'm gonna go down to one maybe you guys want to rally these guys because um they're coming in I don't know if you want to rally or sh shoot you have one action let's let's go ahead and rally snipers already snipers already active uh, so they remove one So next turn they don't get any um, penalties for uh, for activating. Okay, and we're on to the next turn. Um, this game lasts till turn six, by the way, and we're already at turn four. So it's not looking the greatest for me. Oh, I apologize. I have still have one guy left. Yes, I do. Uh, I forgot what card it was, but you know what? I'm just gonna move down this. I think it was a two action card. So I'm gonna move them there. And they're gonna go ahead and rally. Wait, did I? Did I? Oh no, I already tried that. No, you're right. I already activated it. I'm, I'm getting confuddled now. They cannot move. Um, so that's that's the go. It's the next. It's turn five now. So I'm gonna check my cards. And I'm gonna go ahead and play. So I drew a King of Hearts. Uh, I'm going first, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting it fuddled. Um, okay, I'm going to. This is uh, this is interesting. I am going to go ahead and I could move up, but I would be like, you guys all have to reload. Oh, this is scary. Um, I have to do it at some point. Uh, no, I'm just gonna move these guys onto the dock. No, 
There's no room. Okay, I'm just gonna have to move up. This is scary. Okay, I'm just gonna do it. I have two actions. I can move up for one. They actually haven't shot in a while, so they're going to go ahead and shoot point-blank range into this unit here. That's just outside of four inches. That's only a penalty of one. So they're going to need sevens as well. Needing sevens. And I got one, two, three, four. That's 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 gonna hurt a lot. Um, so I got four hits. You guys have to make four saves. Your save is pretty good. You have a save of five um, because of your special elusive rule. So three die. Do you want to spend your last fortune or do you want to just let them die? At this current stage in the game, you guys are technically winning. Um, it could change real fast. Depends how many models I kill. Fortune. Okay, we're gonna try to save them. Last fortune. They need uh, fives. Uh, so only one die this time. So maybe fortune well spent. Um, they're still gonna roll their two resolve checks. They pass, so they're okay. Um, yeah, and one die. You guys have only suffered three casualties so far, and I've suffered two, four, six, eight. Um, which is kind of how things go. Um, so I went ahead and shot. So I get to I have to put some reload. Um, and that's their go. So you guys now get to go next. Now, these guys are no longer in cover, so you probably want to shoot them as much as you can. However, a lot of you guys have loaded. Um, so you have two actions. I think maybe the only way you can do it is to activate your snipers. Otherwise, it's going to take too long to reload. you also need to push your snipers. Mm. That's probably what you're gonna get. You're gonna have to suffer a fatigue to go ahead and shoot. Um, you probably wanna rush them at some point. You could rush them actually if you wanted to. You need to activate your commander in order to push or in order to like tell them to run fast farther because they only have one action with those inexperienced units so do you want to rush them with your commander unit they're not the greatest fighters just to let you know um but my guys are also they don't have a great fight save okay do it we're rushing rushing in okay so before i do that i'm probably gonna tell the i'll tell these guys to rally because he, the commander is not going to be able to command once he's in battle outside of his own unit. So I'm going to use one point, which fails. Um, oh, I'll roll that on camera. Thanks. So it failed. <laughs> These guys don't rally, so that's one command point. The rest command point is to tell him to move, move, move charge.
actually, they also have something called plug bayonets. So they're going to use a free action to plug their bayonets, which will give them, um, they'll gain an extra reload. But they're going to give me a minus one penalty on my save, um, should you get any hits. So you have two, four, six, seven, eight. We have eight dice roll. And they are needing. They are needing. They're needing sevens to hit. Uh, that's one. Damn, that's only one. And you guys used up all your fortune. Well, one's better than none. Um, uh, Commander's got a pistol. Go ahead and re roll one. Uh, so that's two. That's actually two. So I'm gonna be rolling an eight because I get that negative one. And I got one die. And they will check their fatigue. And they're fine. They pass their fatigue. So now they're engaged in an ongoing melee. Um, and now it is my game. Sorry, now it's a new card. So you drew a spade. Um, so you get to go this time. Now you can't shoot, unfortunately you can't shoot into combat. You're in a bit of a sticky situation here because you can't shoot into combat and you can't join the combat because there's no room unless you go swimming which apparently in this game, um, sailors can't swim. So what do you guys want to do with your one spade? You want to just try to rally or move closer with the snipers or move the other guys closer? It is a historical uh, game. It's not uh, it's not some fantasy mumbo jumbo. This is historical pirate game right here. <laughs> All right, we'll just wait for the chat and see what you guys want to do, and then we'll uh, go ahead and do what we want. So the cannon crew is now at the bottom of the building. They move, move. Um, oh no, they were move, move, move. They should be outside, I think. Yeah, so we'll be outside the building. So they've abandoned their guns and they're coming down to fight. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and activate the commanders. The commander is gonna command point um, the other guys to fight because I don't want to get stuck in the knee. I just want to kill you guys. And I have five five dudes. Uh, 
And I forgot, um, I forgot to do this last time, but they actually have something called Brace of Pistols. Um, and they can use these during the fight phase, so I can re-roll any um, failed, failed uh, things, fail, failed hits. And I need seven. No. Oh, they haven't fought yet, that's why I didn't use it. So I need fives. So that's one, two. And I get to re-roll these three with my Brace of Pistols. That's just two hits, and you guys have a save of seven. Um, save one, one dies. And you're rolling for your fatigue, and you get one fatigue. So not as bloody as I would hope. So that's one command point from the commander. Um, with the second action, he's gonna move these guys over. Just gonna move these guys over here. Four inches. Last command point, he's gonna get these guys to jump out. Over the boat. And then this boat's just gonna sail away. They forgot to tie the rope down well enough, so it's just no, it's just out of the way, so I can. Uh, have more room to maneuver here. Um, okay. So that's there though. So command point move, move, and that was two movements there. Um, I think that's it for the commander's unit. Last card. Last card for me. I got a nine of diamonds, higher than your five of diamonds. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate these guys. Kind of in a bottleneck, um, but they're just gonna get ready, I guess, to move up. <laughs> oh no, they have pistols, so they might just shoot their pistols. They might move and shoot, they're gonna do that. Brace of pistols, but they just have regular pistols, so they're gonna go ahead and shoot at the Lysians over there. And that's a penalty of two, three, and their shoot is seven, I believe. Uh, so they need tens. I have a blunderbuss, so the blunderbuss will actually get to roll two dice. And no tens, so that was a complete waste of time. I'm gonna use a fortune because I haven't used any yet. So take that. I'm gonna use a fortune and try to get a ten. I completely wasted my fortune. <laughs> that's fine. I still have two left. Um, so that's their go, um, and it is now on to the last turn. Oh no, you still have one more, one more unit. So let's see, who didn't you activate yet? You activated those guys, those guys, those guys. You didn't activate your front unit yet. So we're gonna go ahead and um, with the with a heart, you get one action. Maybe they're gonna go ahead and try to reload, I guess. 
they're not really in a position to do anything else at this point. And I've actually taken two strike points um, now to you guys. Is, do you have a strike point? You have no strike point. So this means I need to take a resolve test. So this is what happens when strike points um, build up. So if, if uh, one side has two strike points more than the other side, um, they need to roll a resolve test. If they fail that test, the entire force runs away and loses. So this is basically going to dictate whether I win or lose. Um, it's the commander, always the commander's unit. So that'll be a resolve of four. So if this is four up, I'm good. And it's a three, but I have a fortune. <laughs> I have to. I have to use my fortune. I rolled a seven, um, so I'm still in the game. I'm still in the game with one fortune left. Um, okay, so that is a new. I'm gonna use my um, faction ability. Oh, which you guys should have moved last turn. So we're, you, your guys' faction ability is to move uh, an extra four inches. Uh, one unit can move once as a free action. So we're going to give that to your sailors. I forgot about that one. And my uh, faction ability is just to replace all my cards with brand new ones, because I had a poopy hand. So now I'm gonna, and that's what I want. So, yes. So now I'm gonna play my spade, and you guys get a club. So now, my filibusters, Bustiers, who are engaged in the fight, they're going to activate first, and they're going to try to kill as many people as possible. So they need a five and brace the pistols. One, two, and I get to re-roll all of these. Three. So that's three hits with them. Um, you guys need to take three saves. Uh, that's two dead. And you need to take three resolve tests. Uh, so you get one fatigue. You're now two fatigue. You're still fighting. Um, you're not running away yet, so that's good. But it is now your turn. So which unit do you guys want to activate? Commanders do run away sometimes. Um, it's pretty funny. They, when that happens, it's, it's really bad because you don't have command points anymore. shoot if you risk hitting your own men you can't shoot but you got some people on the dock here um, so probably this unit but you're activated on a spade 
which just means you would have to push. You'd have to gain another fatigue to sh Oh no, it's a club. So they get some reloads, but that's okay. Yeah, why don't, why don't you go, guys go ahead and shoot. So you're gonna reload for one, but you're actually gonna gain three because of the slow reload rule. But that's okay, it's the last turn. Um, and then you're gonna go ahead and shoot. So that'll just be a penalty of one this time on six dice. Needing seven. And you got two, two out of them. I'm gonna try to save on nines because I'm wait, wait, wide out in the open. I can only save on nines. So one saves and the other one, uh, the other one fails. So I'll make a resolve test and get one more with one more. So you're whittling me down. Um, next card. Uh, you drew a club, I drew a heart. So I get to go first again. And I'm gonna command point my unit to fight again. And I have to double check something, but I believe they'll gain a point of fatigue because they're fighting twice in one round. I'm not completely sure if that's the rule, but it's, uh, I'll double check that later. But we'll say it's the rule for this game. So they need five. Um, ooh, that's that's four hits. That's four hits. So the command, your commander's unit, can they need to make four saves, and that's four failures. <laughs> Three, five, two, five. We're saving on sevens. Uh, so basically, your commander's left. So what happens now? As I killed four, your commander is left with two fatigue. Now, any time a unit has more, as double the number of, uh, the fatigue is double the number of units, um, that unit immediately routes. So you've effectively lost your commander and he's dead. Because this um, unit has two fatigue, there's only one model left. So, routed. Um, I get to make a movement, it's called consolidate after I kill a unit, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that was just one command point. My next command point will be to get to these guys to run up, I think. It's not even a command point, it's just they're gonna run up. And they've got something called grenados. So I have two grenados um, with these units. So each grenado gets three dice to roll. And I'm going to be throwing it into the uh, Melissians over there and hopefully blow them up. So, Grenadoes have a, a flat success rate of six, uh, seven, I mean. Uh, so that's one, two, three. And that's pretty good. We'll keep that. And you only get to save on Grenadoes with nines. 
So it's just like being in the open. And so that's three dead. That's three dead. Um, the guys need to take four resolve tests. Of which they fail. Resolve of six. They fail three. Or fatigue, and they are shaken, so they are gonna run away. So flee. All right, see, so the tide turned really quickly when I activated uh, that unit. However, um, I threw grenades, I moved them, so that's two actions. I still have one command point, because the other command point was for them to uh, fight. So I think I'm just gonna rally, hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and rally this back unit, maybe. That's my last command point. Um, which is, yeah, so yeah, they get rid of their fatigue. So I'm preparing for the wave of artillery crew that's coming on. Actually, they're Marines. Um, so it's now your go at the club. So I assume you're going to charge. Because you have enough, enough room to do so. This could be deadly. Yeah, you can definitely make it. Um, you guys have pistols too, so you're going to be re-rolling. This is going to be really deadly. Which unit do you want to charge? You can charge one unit. Um, the filibusters or my commander's unit. As you guys are deciding, I'm just going to move them up. There's two units there. You know what? We're just going to pick on... Do you want to kill the my commander's unit, or do you want to kill my other unit, which is a little bit weaker? Everybody abandoned cannons because they're too far away. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and... We're going to go ahead and probably target... We're going to target the weaker unit, maybe. They have a, they have a lower fight. Uh, about, uh, save. Do you guys got how many guys get out? You guys got nine guys. Let me just get this out of the way and see. So you've got nine dice. They've got a rule called hard chargers which brings their already incredible um, fight value of five down to a four. And they have loaded pistols, which gets to re-roll any fours, any fails.
So that's Nine. So that's nine. That's nine. Uh, <laughs> nine successful attacks. Um, and I basically four die because I don't have that many saves to make. I can only make one save per model. And five left. Or die immediately, and the last guy runs away and jumps into the water because he's scared shitless. Um, so that was pretty good. That was a successful attack. Um, and that's the end of that turn. That guy's go. But wait for the counter charge. I can't do it because I'm out of range. That's okay. Um, I've got a heart. And you guys get a spade. So you guys get to go first. You don't have a commander unit anymore. Um, which is unfortunate. So what unit do you have left? I think you just have your buccaneers. Who are your snipers. Um, they're probably just going to move and shoot. Oh, they can't even shoot because they need. To, they're gonna do as much as they can. They're gonna reload free for one on the spade. They're gonna reload again um, with their action, and then they're just gonna push to shoot. Now you got the models in the way, so you can only really shoot with two guys. Um, the rest will be out of. So you. You're, shoot with two guys. That'll be a penalty of two. Um, they miss, unfortunately. So, anticlimactic ending for those guys. Um, I still have one more um, activation, and I'm going to reload, reload. Push to shoot. Uh, no, yeah, push to shoot. We're just gonna do that. Four guys left, and I'm just going point blank at your guys on the dock. That's just under four inches. Um, Blunderbuss gets two dice. Everybody else gets one. Uh, so that'll be a penalty. Penalty of one, I believe. Shoot of um, shoot of seven. So I'm looking for eights. One, two, three. I'm not gonna spend my last fortune point on that. Um, that's pretty good. You guys have to save. You have a save of seven. And three of your guys die. Finally, you'll check the result. Um, and you fail two, so you get two fatigue. All right, so that's it. That's the end of the game. Um, let's count casualties. casualties on my end so that's two strike points for me on my end plus a strike point for not getting to the docks so turn three plus a strike point for not getting to the last objective so that's uh, one two three four four strike points for me you guys, on the other hand, six, 
17 kills. Um, so it's two strike points for you, for kills, um, and just a strike point for not protecting this one. So that's three for you, so you guys actually win. So this is a very difficult scenario for the attacker, because um, I have to push all the way in. But I did get some kills. I probably should have rushed to the dock a little earlier and just abandoned trying to shoot you with my cannons, because they didn't, didn't do too much damage. Um, and the fighting did a lot, and my guys are pretty good fighters, so probably in the future if I do this again, I'm just going to rush to the dock and jump out as soon as I can, and maybe not even buy cannons. This scenario is a difficult one for the attacker, um, notably so. And I didn't even try shooting at your fort, because it's just so strong, I would ne never have penetrated it. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, um, let me get settled now, game recap, um, how'd you guys like that? Yeah, was it, was it okay? Um, it's, it's a lot to figure out when you watch over it, but you kind of, you kind of get the idea of fatigue and of reloading as you watch and progress. But, uh, but yeah, this is a 200 point game. This is kind of the standard size. You can do bigger games or smaller games. <coughs> but this is kind of the, um, the standard size to go with. Um, but yeah, it's pretty fun. I hope you guys like it. I don't know, um, I don't know how fast it was for you guys, how the latency was, if you guys, if there was a big lag between when I was talking and you guys were responding, but seem to be go pretty fun it's a lot fun more fun to play with uh, opponents um, online actually having feedback of what the units can do instead of me just playing by myself in in covid times <laughs> yeah so the the way the actions go is if you have a inexperienced unit on a spade and a heart they get one unit or one action and on a diamond and a club they get two it's kind of like a rolling matrix um for trained units on a spade you get one action on a heart and a diamond you get two actions and on a club you get three actions and for veteran units uh on a spade and a heart you get two actions and on a diamond and a club you get three actions and your force had the two inexperienced units by the water and you had a veteran unit, the Buccaneers, um, the snipers, and you had a trained unit uh, manning the uh, manning the guns. Okay, next time I'll, I'll put a yeah I'll put I'll, that's a good idea I'll put the uh, <coughs> I'll put the little cheat sheet at the bottom. Excuse me, let me grab some water. I do have a link um, under the uh, under the video. You can check out what forces, the stats, and the uh, special rules of the forces in more detail. Um, so you can check that out. I don't know if there's a link to the uh, like action um, priority matrix, but uh, I can just make one. I'll put it in the, the bottom of the screen. But yeah, you guys won. Yay! Uh, kind of. Yeah, I kind of got Mia to play this. I mean, <laughs> she's mostly watching. I don't think she'll, uh, I don't think she'll want to play. Otherwise, she, she was just kind of chilling and watching, but that's fine. Um, oh, you were taking pictures, haha. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's pretty fun. And uh, I'm glad I got it all. Like I got all my model models painted for this battle. Um, it's the first kind of battle I played with everything painted, which is nice. And it looks looks really nice on uh, on camera and on uh, 
on the table. Yeah, when we when we can play in real life, um, we can play in real life. You don't like being baited, but but there's no there's literally no uh, no excuse now. You don't even have to buy the models. I mean, I've got them all. <laughs> Until you feel like, uh, until you feel like it. First time's always free, remember? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Demon Lord, you're so far away. But also, everyone's so far away right now because, uh, we're kind of in lockdown, so. That's okay. Eventually it'll end. Um. But yeah. It was pretty fun. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, you can let me know now or uh, in the comments if you want. Or next time we play, it's fine. No word is a drug. <laughs> hey, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mention anything about drugs. Um, fun is the only kind of drug I deal in. Ooh -hoo. Yes, Demon Lord, please move to BC. That'll be so much fun. D&D &D and boat games. Um, this is a historical miniatures war game. Uh, at least call it a ship game, because it's mostly, you know, I'm, I have ships and boats. Oh god, boat games is a thing now. <laughs> All right, I think I might call it quits. Um, thank you guys for joining. It's already nine o'clock. Um, two hours, not too bad. Um, I'll try to go a bit quicker next time. Try to bring up the latency um, so I can react a little bit quicker with you. Um, you didn't sink my ship, but you did defend your treasure. So congratulations. Um, I'll try to set up something next time in the near future. My next stream, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I might do a crafting session. <clears throat> on a like a miniature house um but i'll do a battle report i think the next battle report or live battle i'll do is probably a land battle um and we'll see how that goes and then at one point i'll do a, just a complete sea battle i'll have to do that in my living room because my t this table is not big enough unless i do it on the floor i'm not sure but i'll need a bigger table for the ship to ship battle but those those will be fun that's that's quite fun as well um, and then after, um, hopefully we can do one in person one day or with an opponent. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for joining and we'll see you next time. I'm going to try to do another one on Monday again next week. <laughs>